Today on The Joy of Editing, this is episode number 65 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. I'm entitling this one, The Abstract Sunflower, A Canvas of Creativity. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I thought I'd pull out Topaz Studio 2 again. I love Topaz Studio 2. And I know a lot of you out there love it too, and I wish Topaz would bring it back, or at the very least, give it a new update. As long as it still works for me, I'll keep using it. And I know a lot of you out there are still using it as well. That's why I'm doing these tutorials. Plus, it's a lot of fun creating with Topaz Studio too. Well, let's go ahead and dive right in. I duplicated my background layer. I like to do that. One, I don't like to work on my background layer. Two, in case I want to pull back on the opacity of the Topaz Studio 2 result that comes back into Photoshop, it's nice to have that underlying layer. Now it's time to launch Topaz Studio 2. I'll come up here to the Photoshop menu, click on Filter, come down and click on Topaz Studio 2. And here we are inside of Topaz Studio 2. Let's have some fun. On my last Topaz Studio 2 video, episode number 64, I was working with looks. And I thought I'd work with looks today. They're a great way to get your creative juices flowing. So let me go ahead and click on add look. Now, after you click on add look, you'll notice the look category. Right now I'm on bold, which is where I'm going to be finding the look I want. If you click on the drop down, you'll notice you have a bunch of different looks that came with Topaz Studio 2. And this is really a great way to start. And I was looking through some of these looks and then I came on to this bold category. And you also have a sort by right now it's on all but then they have different filters that you can go through and find looks for those different filters. This was such a well thought out piece of software. I wonder if the original developers of this software still work for Topaz. Boy, I sure hope they do. If you'd like to see a product like this brought back by Topaz, please let me know in the comments section below. I know I, for one, would like to see it. And who knows, maybe Topaz will watch this video and see how many people want to have a product like this. I'm in the category of bold and you'll notice you can see a thumbnail representation of what the image would look like. And what I like to do is find one that I kind of like. And this to me is a starting point because after that, then you can tweak these up, add different filters to them. Like for instance, let's click on this one, contrast cables. And now we can see it on the image itself. Now you also have an amount slider that you could pull this back. Like you don't have to take it at full strength. So this can be very helpful like that. That looks pretty cool right there. This is not the look I'm going for, by the way. I'm going to scroll the whole way down through here and just just notice the different looks that you see here. A lot of these I don't really like so much. For this image anyway, It could look they could look great on other images. But I found this last one here, yellow intensity. So I'm going to click on that. And now we can see what that looks like. And that's a nice starting point for me. Now again, I could pull back on the amount if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it up at 100% and click apply, and that'll apply. Now you'll notice I have a group called yellow intensity, and this opacity slider is for this entire group here. And now you'll notice inside this group, I have three filters, bloom, precision contrast, and AI remix. Now if I pull this opacity back, that'll pull the opacity back on the entire group, as you can see, but I'm going to leave it up full. Now, to open up any of these filters, just click on it. Now, here is the Bloom filter. Now, I'm going to take this strength and pull this up to the right just to show you what it's doing. We don't see much of an effect there, but if I take the threshold slider and I start to drag it up, you can see what it's doing. It's taken, it looks like, all the lighter values and adding a bit of a glow to them. So, if you're looking for that look, the Bloom filter could be the one for you. I don't like it for this image, so you see this trash can right here? I'm not going to use it, so I'm just going to click on the trash can and that one goes away. Now let's click on AI Remix, and now we'll make some adjustments. Now, if you'll notice the opacity for this filter is at 18, I'm gonna drag this to the right to like 0.30, just to make the effect a little bit stronger. And you'll notice we're using this Remix preset right here, Yellow Brick Road. And now let's scroll down a little bit and see what we can do here on these adjustments. And the way this works, it will take an image like this particular image you're seeing here for this preset and map it onto your image using AI. Now notice we have style strength, low, medium, and high. Let me click on low so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so we get a different look. 
here's medium, and that's kind of nice, and I like it, and here is high, but I think I'm going to go with high. And then notice up here, we're set to normal. This is a blend mode. You can click this drop down. You can hover through these different blend modes and you might find a blend mode that you like. Like that is pretty cool, linear burn. Here's screen, here's overlay. So you might find one of these. So I like to experiment with the different blend modes. But for this image, I'm gonna leave it normal because I do have that opacity pulled back and I like this look. Now we can adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue. This image looks a little bit over contrasty to me, so what I think I'll do is pull back in the contrast and see what we can get here. Yeah, I like that. It's getting a nice softer look. And I think I'm going to go to like right here, a 0.46. Now, if you left click on either the image or anywhere in this canvas area, left click and hold, you can see there's the before and there's the after. So far, so good but we're not done. And note, we also have these sliders, smooth edge, sharpness, and suppress artifacts. I like where everything's set here, so I'm not gonna mess with these right now. Let's move on. Now let's go up to this precision contrast filter, click on it, and we can see the settings that were already picked for us with this look. But I think I wanna change some of these. Now I love the precision contrast filter. This is a very elaborate contrast filter because it breaks contrast down into micro areas, think sharpening, low areas of contrast, medium areas of contrast, and high areas of contrast. And then we have lighting controls. We can adjust shadows, midtones, and highlights. We have equalization buttons, low, medium, and high. And we also have color adjustments, saturation, vibrance, but it has a special adjustment called color contrast that deals only with color contrast. I don't use that that often, but sometimes I do and it can be very effective. I won't be using it today. I do want to readjust low contrast. Let me pull it to the right so you can see what it's doing. See those low areas of contrast? They're getting very contrasty. I don't want that much. I'm going to take it lower than what they gave us. I'm going to take it down to right here, 0.41. And I like that little bit of low contrast that we're adding. And then medium contrast. Instead of adding contrast, we start here at zero. To the right of zero, we can add medium contrast. To the left, we can take it away. I want to take some of that medium contrast away. So I'm going to drag this to the left over to right here, minus 64. Now I can shut the precision contrast layer off by clicking this eye. So let me click it. Here's before and here is after. And I like that. And that's all I want to do with precision contrast. But if you want to see your controls come back up, all you have to do is click on precision contrast again. I like this pastel look I'm getting here, but if I wanted more saturation, we could come down here to color and boost up the saturation. So whatever your vision is for your creation, adjust that accordingly. But to reset anything, just double click on the name of the slider. Like saturation, double click it, and now we're back to zero. But I like it here. Now we're gonna add another filter. So we come up and click add filter. What I'm looking at is the center of the sunflower, and I would like to take some of that detail out of there. And a good way of doing that is to use a special filter in the stylistic category, and it is called abstraction. So let's click on it, and it will remove detail, and I love this filter. So what we're gonna do is take this simplify size and drag it to the right, and notice how it starts to take detail out of the image. You see that? And right there, that's where I like it, point 26 and then you have different color spaces and sometimes i like to check the different color spaces this is rgb and this is yuv i'm not sure what that stands for but i'm not seeing much of a change here sometimes you will notice a difference and how do you know which one to pick the one that looks good to you that's the way i do it anyway let's see what this looks like with the abstraction filter shut off so let me click the eye there's before the abstraction filter and click the eye again here is after i really like that i think it really helps with this abstract sunflower image can you see why i call topaz studio to my creative toolbox because you can get so creative here I'm going to add one more filter, so let's click on Add Filter, and we're just going to use a basic adjustment filter. So I'll click on this one, and I just want to do a couple things here. This filter is called the Basic Adjustment Filter. All I want to do is increase my exposure a little bit to right here, and then with the Shadow Slider, I want to darken up my shadows a little bit. We can open the shadows up by moving the slider to the right. We can darken them by moving this to the left. So I'm going to move this to the left to, say, right here 0.55 see it just enriches those shadows which looks really nice 
give me a little bit more contrast in the center of the sunflower. Let me remove this basic adjustment by clicking on the eye to shut this layer off. There's before and now I'll turn it back on and here is after. Again, I'm going to left click and hold. There's where we started and here's where we end. And I really love this abstract sunflower. The creative possibilities using Topaz Studio 2 are really almost endless. I'm done now with Studio 2, so let's come up to the menu and click Accept. That'll send us into Photoshop, and just like that, we're back in Photoshop. And now if I wanted to, I could take the opacity of the Topaz Studio 2 layer and pull it back and let some of the original image show through if I wanted to, something like that. But I'll drag the opacity back up to 100% because I do like it at 100%. Now this would make a nice print to hang on a wall somewhere. I really enjoy this image. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.